Hello everyone, this is Edgar with Team Lotus Box, and today I am going to be talking about my Legacy choice for this weekend. Uh, coming up this weekend, we do have the Legacy Showcase in addition to the Dice City Games Tournament, so I've been uh, putting a little bit of work into this format this week. And surprisingly, even surprising to myself, I have actually uh, kind of switched back onto Snow um after advocating for rug delver for so long it feels like now i've been playing that deck for a while and i still do think that rug delver is um a very good choice if, if not probably just still the best choice but uh I'm, i decided to change it up a bit and i think for this weekend i'm actually going to be playing this deck even though i am going back and forth i think i think i am going to ultimately settle on this deck for this weekend and the main reason for that, um, I'm actually going to get to when we get over to the sideboard. Uh, but I will be talking about the main deck really quick here for a bit. So basically this is just a snow control deck. Um, this deck has kind of uh, been pretty prevalent in the format ever since the introduction of Oko and Uro. Um, most recently Uro, I suppose, has really... Uh, given this deck a, a new sense of inevitability uh, that I didn't really have access to before. Um, it, this card just plays very differently than stuff like Jace the Mind Sculptor did in that spot, uh, which decks like this typically play beforehand, because it's a lot better when you're not already stabilized or already ahead in the game. It's a, a much more reasonable card when you're behind, when you're trying to dig through the stuff that you want to dig to, the life gives you some extra turns sometimes, etc. So... Uh, definitely re revitalized the strategy, and it has been a player for a while. I think it's been a little bit worse than Delver in recent times, but uh, basically you're just trying to fetch a lot of basics, develop your mana base, you build card advantage using Ice Fang, Kodal, Oko, your Wraths, etc. Lots of quality removal spells with Swords of Flower Cures and Abrupt Decay. This this list is opting to be base Sultai in the main deck with a small white splash and then it, it sideboards into red cards for the full five color experience. Um, you do have the Volcanic in the main deck. This is a card that I've played in the sideboard before, but um, just playing an extra land in the main deck and you kind of just play it as a non-basic island. Obviously a bit of a liability sometimes, but uh, not a huge deal when you get to conserve sideboard space. Um, so in terms of my choices, Playing a lot of forces, very quality in this deck. Two Sylvan Library, pretty typical in the strategy as of late. Uh, this card became a main deck inclusion again after the introduction of the two blue green three drops, just giving you a lot of incidental life gain. Uh, really makes this card less of a liability even in the aggressive matchup, so uh, kind of got moved towards the main deck rather than a sideboard choice. Uh, I'm playing four Ice Fang Kodal, which isn't the most typical thing these days. I think people are playing less, but honestly, I kind of just feel like this card is pretty core to the strategy. Um, and every time I play this deck, I have shaved this card in numbers, or Strix if you're playing uh, a slightly different version. Um, I've shaved down on this, but then... I've just almost always gone back up to four copies because it, it just it's so important for the overall game plan it lets you do something with your with your mana on turns that you otherwise wouldn't be able to they are blue cards to pitch to forces in the in the combo matchup so it's not like they're a liability there and it's just one of the more powerful cards against a lot of the aggressive creature decks to make sure that you don't get chip damage and you can play the game at whatever pace that you want to play it at, not necessarily have to use your Swords of Plowshares on something like a Nettle Sentinel against Elves um, in order to not get beat down. Like You have the, the luxury of, of developing a battlefield. So I think it's just a, a very, very core card, and, and it might have something to do with how I like to play this deck. I do definitely play it more like a Jun deck than a lot of people do. I've had discussions with... Um, like Anurag Das about uh, these strategies, and I know Anurag likes to play it a lot more like a Miracles deck where you're trying to have a really big uh, swingy turn where you it's really difficult for your opponent to come back from, or, or you slam your Haymaker, like like bring back an Uro on a turn on the same turn you Wrath, something like that. But I, I definitely like to just play more like a traditional Jun deck and just try to make sure that all my resources trade one-to-one, -one, and then eventually you're just going to pull out ahead with your incidental advantage. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's mostly the main deck. Two Dead of Winter, two Abrupt Decay, just pretty common common removal spells in this build. Nothing nothing much to speak of here. Um, 
The sideboard is where things get much more interesting. We are boarding into the fourth color. Red Blast, obviously very powerful in all these snow mirrors. The main reason, though, uh, that I decided to revisit this strategy uh, was actually I was talking to Jarvis U about this deck, and he had showed me his list, uh, which is very similar to this. So I, I just went off his list, so a lot of credit goes to him. Um, but his sideboard actually had two copies of Ground Seal in it. And when I saw that card, it, it wasn't really a card that I had considered for this strategy in a, in a really long time. Not, not something I've played in, in recent memory. But it's actually very, um, very subtly super powerful at beating the things that beat this deck. Which... I think is a problem that this deck has. So part of the reason why I wasn't too excited about this strategy in general was because I felt it didn't actually beat Delver as consistently as it needed to in order to be a strong consideration for the format. And the reason for that is because this deck in general, and this is just basically has always been true, these snow decks are always much worse against the combo decks than the Delver decks are. But it gains its percentages in other places, right? Like it's better against the elves and the DNTs of the world. And historically it's been better heads up against the Delver deck. At least it's been like 50, 50, but in my opinion, it has been favored at a lot of points of time. And I think that's part of the reason you would get, you would, this deck would get a nod over a Delver deck where the Delver deck would be better if you expect to play against more combo. But as of recent, I felt that with the the power level of the Delver decks, with the Delver decks having cards like Dreadhorde Arcanist, Oko, lots of powerful cyborg cards like Clothis, that the Delver decks actually were beating these snow decks more consistently than I than I thought they would, and that's what originally made me move off of them. But this Ground Seal card actually, I think, kind of solves the problem in the other way, uh, and is something that I'm not considered. The, the Delver deck against the snow deck has three main avenues of victory in my mind. The first one is to get... Uh, a runaway advantage with Dreadhorde Arcanist. The second one is to slam a Haymaker, namely Clothis is the card that people are playing. Um, a card that I have two copies of in my Delver deck because it's so powerful against the Snow strategy. And the third way to, to beat this deck is actually to just basically deck them um, by using Surgical Extraction. Surgical on Uro is actually very powerful against this deck. Um, as long as you have an actual way to beat the rest of what's going on, but for the most part, the rest of what's going on is just a few copies of Oko. This deck is honestly pretty thread light in terms of variety of threats. I do have a copy of Felidar Retreat to diversify my threats after board, but uh, a Surgical and an Uro can actually be pretty devastating in a lot of games, and the Ground Seal also ends up countering that. So the Ground Seal stops Dreadhorde Archive, stops Clothis, and stops Surgical Extraction on your Uro, and is a proactive card that you can play when you have the luxury to play it. Um, which means you can like sneak it on your days. It's not reactive, so you're never gonna, like if your Delver opponent, if you had something like Celestial Purge instead for Clothis, your Delver opponent could theoretically set up a scenario where they have Clothis with protection back up if they anticipate you having something like Purge, where Seal, you can find that window to slide it in and then it might be difficult for them to deal with later. So th this is a card that I think has really I don't want to say swung the matchup, but given you given you good playback, uh, I never really had another card that that was doing it as effectively as Ground Seal has been doing that for me this week. So I know I'm talking a lot about this card, but uh, I think that that's actually one of the main draws subtly to to why I started playing this deck again, and I'm pretty excited about it going forward. Um, so the rest of the sideboard, uh, Carpet of Flowers. For the blue matchups, also really good against Delver, but Ground Seal is getting the nod. I could see even just playing three Ground Seals, and to go back to the Ground Seal, sorry about that, I'm talking a lot about this card. It's also has obvious other application when uh, when you bring it in against graveyard-based decks like Reanimator, like Lands, which have been trouble matchups for this deck in the past, so you get a little incidental splash shade there as well. Uh, carpet for the blue decks from the ashes. Uh, the other, the only other red card splash. You you don't want to play a lot of red cards just because the mana base can be a little shaky. And a lot of matchups, um, you do want to try to only be four colors if you can. So like board out all the black or the white cards if you're bringing in the red cards. For example, against sneak and show, sometimes you want to board out all the plows, but that gets a little difficult with the middling mages. So I guess we don't really get to do that as much anymore. But 
you don't want too many red cards because you don't want to you don't want to strain the mana base too much. But the one copy from the ashes is fairly powerful, and you can just fetch the red source and play it the turn you want to play it. And having access to one of these with all the cantrips can really swing something like the lands matchup. So. I uh, definitely like having access to one of these. Meddling Mage is for combo, namely Show and Tell is the main reason to have this. Um, and the reason for that is the blue-green Omni decks have a lot of veils, so it's pretty difficult to fight them on the stack sometimes. And it's just a kind of a difficult matchup in general, and it can be kind of tough from the Sneak and Show side or the Omni Tell side to bring in a lot of answers to a card like this. Um, so often when you get to stick it, it's, it's a very preemptive counter spell for one or more pieces of combo. Uh, Plague Engineer is a nod to the Rise of Elves and the Rise of DNT. We saw DNT performing really strongly a week or two ago. I'm not quite sure when it was, but, uh, um, DNT did very well and Elves has been pretty popular as of late with Allosaurus Rider. And I don't think that these Dead of Winners are enough to, to beat them on their own. So I do like having a couple copies of Plague Engineer in the sideboard in order to improve that matchup a little bit. Felidor Retreat I spoke to as a way to diversify your threats. This card's very good in these slow blue mirrors. Um, historically, the way that you want to tackle uh, these, these blue mid-range mirrors after board is to have some sort of threat that can't be decayed can't be red blasted sometimes can't be blue blasted depending on the metagame basically you want something that dodges all of the pieces of interaction that people are playing at the time and a lot of snow decks do have like one or two copies of assassin's trophy maybe three if your name is Honorog. but um for the most part most people don't tend to have a lot of answers to four or plus four or more mana permanents that cost uh that are white and aren't artifacts so doesn't get Oko, doesn't get Pyroblast, it doesn't get Decayed. That's basically the three things. And uh, you've seen cards like getting Ally Zendikar in this slot before, cards like Palace Healer. But I think Felder Retreat, a new addition, is better than both of those. Jailer is a little bit of a liability when everyone's playing Kotals. Um, it's actually better against stuff like DNT. Uh, mostly because you get to steal the monarch back from them when they when they become the monarch using their palace scaler, which can be a pretty big deal. But uh, in these snow mirrors, it can be really scary to just play a play a jailer on turn four when the threat of an end of turn cold or an untap oko make my food into a three three is is always looming. So uh, a little bit of a liability in this card is probably just going to win you a similar amount of games. Like, it's pretty pretty easy to make your land drops. Fetch lands are 2 2 twos. It's can be a lot of a lot of board pressure. So, a card that I've been happy with a lot. And this Kaya is also ser serving a similar purpose, albeit a little bit different. Does come in early. Uh, I think it's just a really good way to win this Uro Arms race while not being that bad of a cyborg card against some other decks. You do get to board this in to deal with stuff like Chalice of the Void, uh, just decks with a lot of key permanence, so uh, kind of a, a very versatile cyborg card that I, I've been boarding in a lot. We've been joking that every every matchup is a Kaya matchup, but um, definitely something that's been coming in a lot, and, and is really good when the game slowed down, and also very good at docking all the blast effects and, and stuff like Fluster Storm. So uh, I've been pretty happy with Kaya. And to round it out, just two copies of Spell Bomb. Unfortunately, Ground Seal does not stop uh, Exhum, and doesn't do very much against Hogak. If if those weren't issues, I would probably be playing just a bunch of these and no spell bombs, but unfortunately you still need to have a little bit of actual graveyard hate in order to fight those those uh, dedicated graveyard strategies. So uh, two copies of spell bomb, also pretty powerful in these in these slow blue mirrors as well. Uh, it lets you deal with an Oko and not or sorry an Uro and not lose any card advantage. So um, a nice card to have in the sideboard. But yep, that's about it. Um, that's my, my 10 minute spiel on, on why Ground Seal is one of the best cards in, in Legacy right now. Uh, so I think I'm going to be playing this deck this weekend. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for me. Uh, and good luck in any Legacy tournaments you may be playing this weekend. Talk to you next time.